on, somebody, can somebody declare tonight, hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free. If you know what I'm talking about, if that word means anything to you, then you know what I'm saying. Can you say hallelujah, I'm free. To understand, you know what, to say what? We, we was, I was standing next to my son-in-law over there, and we got to talk. He, I heard him and he's singing a song. He said, look where I'm standing now. Look where I'm standing now. Woo! Make me want to holler up in here. Look where I'm standing now. Look where I'm standing now. You know what? I know where I was. But praise God, I'm not there anymore. Look where. Look where he put our feet now. Look where I'm standing now. You know what to think about that? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm free, praise God. I'm free. You know what? To be able to shout that and, and know that. And watch this. I'm going to say this to you, and then if you can, you can sit down. But listen to me. If you truly meant that when you sang it and you, and you said, I'm free, can't nobody take it away from you. Mm, 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 mm. My, my, my. Hallelujah, I'm free. Can't nobody take it away from me. You know what? The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Amen. It's something that, that only come through God. And you know what? Look where I'm standing, and the reason I'm standing where I'm standing, because he's, you know what, he reached down, and he picked me up, and he placed my feet on solid ground. Y'all, I could, I could talk about God and what God is doing all the time. I was over there praying well ago. Y'all, it's, it's so amazing to watch how God works, because it's going to blow your mind. I didn't know, I didn't know till, till I heard him. Practice. I didn't know what they was. They was what the worship was going to be tonight. And when 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 you hear the the title of this message, and you hear what this message is about, and you hear what pledge just talked about, I, that's what I love about God. And that's what's happening here right now. That's what's happening, and, and the thing that's taking place. And you know what? I, I told somebody this morning that you know what? Before the foundation of earth, God wrote it out. You know what? He wrote it out exactly at six twenty three. You'd be sitting right here. And you say, but well, look, he knows all. What's this? He does all. And understand that, 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 that somebody was talking today, was talking about the, the election thing and all that. I said, you know what? We try to figure it out. We try to figure out how and why this has happened, why that's happened. God allows things. And you know what? There's things that's happening that we don't even know about that he's getting prepared to do something that's going to blow the minds of the people. He, he, you know what he's doing? He's not studying about, about what, what it's going to do for this. He's studying about what it's going to do for people. He just wants to see people saved. Amen. And he's got a plan and a purpose in all of it. Something's going to come out of it. He knows how to work bad things to good. Amen. As I shared the other day, y'all, and, and, and continue to share. You know what? I just, I'm a firm believer. People see bad, how bad this world is. You know what? I see how good it is because I see God all in it. Amen. God is all in it. He's a good God. Amen. Watch this. How many felt like you was in a bad world one day? How many feel like you're in a good place right now? What, do you think that God forgot about everybody else out there? Nope. So guess what? That's a good, that's good. It's good there. And we're going to see the good. Amen. Y'all, before we get started, just a little announcement right quick. Anybody interested in being a part in the Easter play coming up, hang around Sunday after church for about 15 minutes and listen to me. Even if you say, well, I don't want to play in it, there's still a lot of things to be done. There's a lot of, lot of work to be done. There's a lot of things, plenty to do. So if you want to hang around for about 15 minutes after the service, and just uh, talk and, and share. And then it gives you now to then to pray. and Say, you know what, God, what can I do? Y'all, this thing has absolutely been powerful every year and making a difference and reaching people. And, and it's talking about what, 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 you know, what, what took place from that cross to the tomb, to the throne.
And so, you know what? Pray about it, and, and if you want to be a part of it, uh, come, come uh, Sunday, hang around for about 15 minutes after service. Amen. Also, Josh and Jerry get married Saturday. <laughs> it was going to be outside up towards Wedowie, but the rain has kind of changed that, so it'll be here at 2 o'clock. And they just want everybody to know that everybody's invited, anybody wants to, 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 to come, but uh, it's going to be here in the church. I told them if it was me after it was over, I'd go down this aisle right here, high five everybody, say, look, come down there, we're going to cut a cake. Peace. I'm out. Amen. I mean, that's just me. That's me, but, you know, amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, so grateful, so thankful unto you that you love us so much and you're so good to us. Father, this excitement is stirring in here. Father, that's not excitement in a building. It's not excitement about people in here. It's excitement about you and what you're doing. That's your fire. And, Father, we just pray that you continue, Father, to, to, to build that fire. And Father, just do what you're doing. And Father, tonight, we thank you for honest with your presence and your glory. Thank you for the awesome worship. Thank you for putting everything together that you're going to do here tonight, Father. And Father, we pray that you help us to be filled with your word. Father, receive your word, apply your word, Father. And we pray always that it be, Father, all of you and none of me, and let your word do exactly <clears throat> as you planned and purpose. We love you, thank you, and praise you, and ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Leviticus chapter 6. Y'all, when I was when I first got saved, I, I, I didn't I, I didn't I didn't know nothing about the Bible, and I wasn't young when I got saved. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't know one thing about the Bible, and of course, still you know you still had a little that pride thing in you, and and so uh, they got me a, a, a little Bible, and I'm so grateful and thankful for, and and and. I should say something like this right here, turn to Leviticus. I didn't know where Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was, much less Leviticus. And he'd say stuff like, the little prophets. I'm talking about who's the big ones. And, and so God was so, he's so wonderful to us, y'all. There was times that I really, I, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but it's happened for me. At that time, I didn't know nothing. If pride was setting in, I was afraid somebody might have thought I didn't know nothing. I was the only one there that, that didn't know that everybody knew I didn't know nothing. <laughs> but sometimes I'd open my Bible fall right open to it. And I'd go, wow. It'd come right to that. that but then, then I learned, I've shared this many times, then I learned about this thing called index. <laughs> I didn't do too good in school, so I really didn't keep up with that. But I found out there was an index in there, and I've shared this many times, but so I'd get in church, and I'd be all good, pride gone. Now, you know what, I'm, I have my finger stuck in the index. <laughs> and the pastor say, turn to, like, Leviticus. Then my mind said, hey, some folks here don't know where that's at. I'd raise that baby up a little bit, and I'd look after that. Page 1367. <laughs> Flip over there. I'd be like, he'd say, if you're there, say amen. I'd say amen. <laughs> Make sure he knew that I was there. <laughs> like I knew where it was at. I didn't have a clue. I, didn't even, I, didn't, I, I, I couldn't even say the name, much less... You're talking about Obadiah. Who? <laughs> so what I'm saying with all that is, don't let, don't let pride keep you out of the index. <laughs> Amen. It's right in the front of the Bible right there, and it runs them down through there. So you know what? That finger, that's called the index finger. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> exactly what it is. 
Amen. Next time I say, turn to so-and-so, you go holler, amen. <laughs> Le Leviticus 6, 12. <laughs> God's word says, meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning, the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offering on it. He will then burn the fat of the peace offering on it. Make me want to holler up in here right now. Make me want to holler. Because you know what? The, the, he didn't, I came in this morning, sit down, just began to study. And all of a sudden, God just began to bring. I'd been, some things he put on my heart. He brought this message. I began to type. He brought this message. And then all of a sudden, there was another one. I started typing. He got another message. And then when I got through with the two, it was like, but neither one of them's for tonight. So I said, okay. So I left, went, and I came back, and I had talked to Stone, and, and, and I told him, I said, I feel like it might be about fire. And I sat down, and God began to put this together, and then they came out, do the worship, and what did Josh start talking about? Fire. But fire. And some of the stuff he's talking about, I'm about to share with you. Y'all, I've been thinking about this past weekend, ever since this past weekend. Thinking about the fire of God that fell in here, y'all. The fire of God that, 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 that you know what, like Josh was talking about a while ago, y'all, I, I don't know if anybody, if you were here, but if you've seen what happened, that we were, we were as, as, as the altar service is going, and then Dalton began just to play the music to that song, and then somebody here started singing, and then everybody started singing all around, and all of a sudden, the, the whole, and, and, and it went on, and then what was, was amazing is Dalton, finally, when they stopped, <clears throat> he started praying, and if he was here, you know, he prayed for, seemed like five minutes to me, I don't know how long it was. <laughs> and his dad stood up and come, and I think his dad thought he was closing prayer, and he was like, I'm not ready to close, and nor was he. It was the fire of God and the spirit of God and the power of God that had failed upon him. So much so that, you know what, when he got through, we just went into another song and then another song and another song. And then they shared with me that, that they went back to their church on Sunday morning. And it was kind of, understand, y'all, when I say what I say, I'm just repeating what what they say sometimes, and even I've repeated last week what that other pastor said, and we'll talk about in a little while. But then Keith said, he said, we had a two-hour and 15-minute service in the Baptist church this morning. He said the power of God failed, and Dalt began to pray again, and next thing you know, people just kept coming and kept coming. That's the fire, and you know what? If you remember that pastor shared that night, he said, don't let this go out. Take it with you in the morning. Y'all, let me, let me tell you about that very pastor right there. And that this has nothing to do with, it's all God. But it's because of what God, God's people have allowed to happen. But that very pastor told me last year, he said, look, we're building a huge building at our church. That it would host this thing every year. But please don't let this be taken away from here because I can't tell you what this does for me and our people. He said, let it stay at the lighthouse because of the freedom that we see here. It does something special inside of everybody else that comes. <laughs> and y'all, to hear them share and talk about that and, and, and to watch and see how, how that, 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 that God moved. And what he done here, the things that took place here this weekend, most folks can't even imagine because it's not what took place here as much as what's going to take place out of here. That, that folks took with them out of here. An all-consuming fresh fire that, that was in here, swept through here. God's presence, and it was so powerful. God's presence was so 
powerful in here. It was absolutely amazing. The worship, the word, the breakthrough, the walls coming down, freedom. It's an awesome, powerful weekend. I've been thinking about it. And today, God began to speak to me. And God titled this message, and it's amazing to hear how he set it up with the worship and everything. He titled this message, Fresh Fire. Fresh Fire. I, I, I don't know how long it'll be. I thought it was going to be short, but who knows? You know what? Y'all know how, how, how God works. So if you got crackers, hold them. <laughs> I want to share some things that God spoke to me during the weekend and after the weekend was over. And as I said, if you were here, you know exactly what I'm talking about, about that fire that fell in here. You know exactly, you know what, the freedom of, of folks. And I kind of, it was kind of amazing to watch and watch our church and, and our church family as we had all these other folks and new folks. And it took a, a, a little bit for, for folks to, to feel, that, you know what, to be reminded that, hey, this is God's house, this is our house, and we're going to be free and we're going to worship the Lord in the way that, that we worship the Lord. And <clears throat> folks begin to move and to come and it never fails y'all every year we have this the one the speakers that come and speak come to me after service and they say wow this is something special this is something special what's going on around here I had a guy last year Vance Pittman or, or year before that, that came and told me and 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 he's 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 a well-known evangelist that, that preaches all over the world he's preached all over the world he said you know what I preached at most every state in the United States and all over this world, and this is his words to me, he said, no, y'all don't take for granted what you got here because I preached all over the world. I've never seen nothing like this right here. I've never been in the middle of something like this right here. And it's the freedom. And you know what? I got a message that's coming soon, but I, uh, it, it pretty much says what it says is, you know what? When the woman came to, to Jesus and, and, he, and he used the parable. He said, you know, when you've, been, when you've been freed of more, you appreciate a whole lot more. Somebody will get that in a little while. When, you, when you've been set free, of, you know what? All of a sudden, it's, it's, it's that thing of, hey, I love y'all, and I know y'all all knew and ain't been around here, but excuse us. We finna go worship. We finna go praise God. We finna get before the Lord in here. If he was here... You know what I'm talking about. And you know what? If you was here and you don't know, then God probably brought, brought this message, stemmed this message through you, about you. Hello? Now, I know it's not anybody here, but how many knows that people can get in the middle of something and still miss it? Amen. Watch this. You ever been with somebody, been somewhere, and you, they, you was at the same place they was. You said, you see that? And they say, what? <laughs> Amen. Man, that was something. I didn't see it. <laughs> Be right in the middle of something and still miss it. I want to share a little bit with you about something that God put on my heart. And then we'll, we'll talk a little more about the scripture that we just went over. But y'all, what's this? <clears throat> I want to share with you about, about really about how, how some see the fire. What's this, y'all? They want to be close to the fire, but not too close. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. They want to get a little warm. They want, they want, to, they want to warm up to the fire. Watch this, watch this sometimes when they cold. They just want to warm up to the fire instead of jumping in to the fire. And I'm talking spiritual, so nobody go say, Pastor Gary said, you have to go jump in the fire to prove your faith. We don't do that. We just have snakes. <laughs> Y'all, the fire that I'm talking about is an all-consuming fire of God. All-consuming fire of God that, that consumes anything that's not of him. Consumes anything that's not of him. That, 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 you know what? That we get right in the midst of that fire of God and just get in the middle. Let him, you know what? Purify us in that fire. Just to get pure in that fire. It burns away all uh, old and brings about fresh. Somebody hear me. 
Somebody knows about that fire I'm talking about. Somebody knows. You know what? Burns away all of that, all that old stuff. The fire that stirs inside us and then grows inside of us. An all-consuming fire of God. It's the fire, the same fire that Elijah called down to show the prophets of Baal how powerful our God is. He said, i tell you what we'll do. He said, you call on your God or your God's and I'll call on my God, and we'll see who wins. And he told them what to do. And they hollered and screamed all day long, and nothing happened. Then he told them, you know what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay this offering down right here, dig ditches around it, put water in it, put wet wood around it, everything else, and watch my God. And he called on God, and he said to come down, consume the offering, dried up the, the ditches, burnt the wood up. That's the fire that I'm talking about. I'm talking about his all-consuming fire, the fire that, that done something inside of you and me that, that we can't put in words, that we can't, we can't explain. It's hard to explain to somebody else, what's this, and it's still burning. It's still burning inside of us. Fire that, 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 that I said, that pastor talked about the other night when he said, talking about burning that wet wood. And he said, you know what? He said, there's a fire in here that, that, that wet wood would burn right now. And he said, you know what? He said, don't let that fire go out. Take it with you in the morning when you go to your church. Y'all, he said it would burn up whatever is around it. That's what we've been feeling around here for a while. Amen. Amen. Would somebody agree? We've been feeling that kind of fire around here for a while. <laughs> Fresh fire. It's the move of God. Now, I'm going to stop for just a second and give a little testimony. I just thought about it over there a while ago, and I want to share it real quick. It won't keep us long. We'll be out of here by 1130, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but, y'all, I, I, I've thought about this recently. And a few years ago, you know, we had COVID. And we had things that had grown up and, and, and grown, and, and, and when we had COVID, you know how it kind of it kind of separated some folks, and, 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 and folks, you know what, got, you know, went and, and, and whatever, uh, uh, kind of maybe being a little nervous about coming in, being whatever, anyway, people left. So it kind of went down to a, to a, to a smaller number. But then the other day, God was speaking to me. He said, but you know what? That number that, that, that sit right there and stayed right there, that's that ones. That's those ones that was, was sold out and said, you know what? I'm not letting go of my God. I'm not letting go of God. And I'm not saying anything about anybody that wasn't here. But, but, but all of a sudden, that fire was stirred in those ones. And then all of a sudden, God began to bring folks in and you know what what's this here's what happens when 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 there was a fire and then all of a sudden you know what more people come they get on fire and you know what everybody gets on fire now every time somebody walks this door they get on fire because everybody in here is on fire for God on fire you know what to, to, to reach people it's just it's just a, a continual forest fire and 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 and, and, I, and I what what God showed me was you know what it had to, once, once it's set in a way that there's a fire already burning, then when people come in, they become a part of the fire. And, and, and now, what's this? And, and nobody, nobody was ashamed to praise him. Nobody's ashamed to worship him. Nobody's ashamed, you know what, to, to let him know, you know what, to, to give glory. And God has stirred that. A fresh fire. And what it is, as I said, it's a move of God. What's this, y'all? Individually, as well as the body. Individually, you know what, that you know. You know what, I, 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 I say it all the time, and I say it jokingly, but I, but I mean it. I tell, I tell, I tell Whitney time and again, I say, Whitney, if God has me to go somewhere to speak, I'm not going unless y'all go. You know what, you got to go, because you know what, look, you see that right there? That's why. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? She ain't worried about nobody else. And it caught on. And it continues to catch on. Amen? 
Y'all, God spoke to me, and, and y'all, he spoke to me about how that, 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 that some people miss that and, and, and why that they miss it. Watch this, y'all, because it's a fire here right now. Amen. An awesome fire God. But some folks just want to cozy up to it. Some folks just want to get, 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 get close enough to get warm. Just don't want to get in. What's this, y'all? Some want to get the warmth off of others. They want to get the warmth off of others, but they, they don't want to get in. They don't want to get in the fire. What's this? You know why? Because they're trying to hold on to some stuff they don't want consumed. They're trying to hold on to some stuff they don't want to get burned out. You know what? Some of that old life, some of that old world, some of that old stuff. Some of that, that stuff that ain't never done them no good, ain't never been good for them, ain't never been worth nothing for trying to hold on, you know what, instead of getting in the fire and letting God consume it. <laughs> trying to hold on to old stuff that they don't want to burn up. What's this? They just want to get warm. Have moments and times when it's cold, you know, when everybody else does, I, I, don't get too close, just let me get warm off of you. Just let me get a little bit of heat. Amen. Amen. They want to be lukewarm. Hello? Hello? They want to be lukewarm. Which God's word says is not pleasing unto him. God's word says that's not pleasing. And you know what? It's not what he wants for me and you. That's not what he intends to take place. Tradition, religion, and man has had this going on forever. It's been going on. That's why, that's why the Lord spoke many, 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 many years ago to the church about it. In the book of Revelation 3, he spoke to the church of Laodicea. He said, I know all the things that you do. Watch this. How many knows he sees all and he knows all? He said, I know what you're doing. It don't matter what you're saying. It don't matter what you say. I know what you're doing. Watch this. I know y'all get up and stand. I mean, talking about here, y'all. I'm talking about somewhere else. I know y'all get up, stand, worship, and holler, but then, you know, you sit down and start talking about somebody. <laughs> I know that, you know what, y'all jump and shout, and everybody get it together and do all this. Then you sit down, you know what, and you're condemning folks. Or I know you jump and shout, but you know what, you ain't going outside and trying to help get nobody saved. Hello? He said, I know what you're doing. I know all the things you do, and that you're neither hot nor cold. He said, I wish that you'd be one or the other. I wish you'd be one or the other, but since you're lukewarm, like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, he said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Let me tell you what that means. That means it makes him sick. One, one translation says, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You know, out in, in, in that old world, you know what, that was a, a slang for, for, for throwing up. Another translation says, I'll vomit you out. It said it makes him sick. Watch this. That, 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 first off, that people think they got something hid from him. He said, I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing. He said, it, it says that, that it's sickening to him. He said, I'd rather you be one or the other. Be hot or be cold, be in or be out, because you know what? This, this lukewarm thing that you're trying to do, that's compromise. You've got compromise in your life. You've got something you're holding on to. He said, get it out. <laughs> rather than playing, rather than being partially in, halfway, he said, be in or out. Listen to me real close. I'm about to tell you something. If you don't remember nothing else, remember this. Partial Obedience to God is disobedience to God. Did you hear me? Some folks say, well, I do this. God don't owe us nothing. People say, well, I go to church. Listen, partial obedience to God is disobedience. Now, when you was a kid, you was coming up, and mom and daddy was holding you accountable, you know what? If you was partially obedient, then you wasn't obedient, was you? What's the difference with God? Partial obedience is disobedience to God. Y'all, we, we need to be in. We 
We need to get all in so the fire can consume anything that's not of God. Amen. Burn away anything that don't need to be there. The Bible says that when, when, when that fire is heated up, it's talking about that gold and it's put in there, it says it burns away the, the drop, it burns away the impurities out of it and makes it pure. God's Word says He wants us to be pure and holy. So, so we need, you know what? We need that all-consuming fire. We need to be right in the midst of it, amen, to get rid of all the impurities in our life. Tell your neighbor, say, get in. Say, the fire won't hurt. You know what? The Bible even teaches us, it said when you go through the fire, that he'll bring us right through it and bring us out. We won't even smell like smoke. You won't even be scorched. We watched Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We heard it, seen what happened. And you know what? Said when they come out, they weren't even singed. Because you know what? God said he'd take care of us. So you know what? Tell your neighbor, say, get in the fire. It won't hurt. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going to talk just for a minute about our, our part with the fire. For years and years, I've heard people make different statements like, man, that was awesome. I wish it'd continue on. I wish it'd keep going. I wish it'd continue to happen. And they're talking about a move of God. Talking about, about, about God moving. They'd say, you know what? what so was like, oh, that was awesome. Like it was over. Like it was done. Y'all, let me say this to you. It's supposed to keep going. It's supposed to keep happening. You know what? For, for, for whatever reason, religion, tradition, and man has made things happen two days a week. We'll go... On Sunday, but we'll feel Jesus. If you ain't feeling Jesus on Monday, you got something wrong with you. Amen. You got something wrong. If you ain't feeling him on Monday, you got something wrong with you. Then we'll get back Wednesday and we'll get charged up. You know what? You got charged up on Tuesday. But man and tradition and religion and man, you know what? It, it's, it's poured a little water on the fire on Sunday and said, we'll be back to light it back up on Wednesday. Hello. Amen. <laughs> the Bible tells us, you know what? That that fire is to keep on burning. It's supposed to keep on burning. <laughs> Y'all, listen to me. People talk about, you know what? I wish it would. It's supposed to. And listen to me. It's not up to the preacher to keep it burning. It's not up to the person next to you to keep it burning. Amen. It's not up to somebody that you're sitting around to keep it burning. It's up to us individually. Each one of us. This says the fire must keep burning. What's this? How many, if you, if you was here, or maybe sometime or another, you've been in the midst of a move of God that just... This sets you on fire inside. How many, how many remembers that? How many, how many would like that to be happening to you all day, every day, all your life? It can. It's up to us. As I said, individually. Each person. Y'all, this says, keep it burning, that it never goes out. That it never goes out. And then it tells us how to do this. It tells us how it happens. Watch this. Think about what this is saying right here, y'all. It says the priest will add fresh wood to the fire every morning. Now, maybe the mindset somebody said, yeah, it was somebody else is doing it. No, wait a minute. I want you to think about this. What did God's word say we was? Kings and priests. That's who he said we was. We're kings and priests. So it said the priest, the priest will add wood to the fire every morning. How'd you start your day today? <laughs> Share the message on Sunday. What'd you put on this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What'd you put on this morning? Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. 
It says that, 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 you know what, the priest got up every day and put wood on the fire. You want your fire to be burning, you got to get up every day, put wood on the fire. Get up every day, put your wood. What's this? I can't wait on you to be happy. Praise God, I'm going to be happy. I pray you'll be happy. Maybe if I get on fire, you'll get around me and get happy. I can't wait on somebody else. It said the priest, that's talking about you and me, put wood on the fire. Y'all, it's up to us to keep the fire burning. Every day, we have to fan the flame. Every day, we have to stoke the fire. Somebody with me? Every day, what's this? We're going to complain about the fire while we're sitting around looking at it. Amen? We're going to complain about it. Look at that fire going down. I used to feel that fire, but I don't feel it no more. Preacher, just don't preach them fire messages no more. The worship just ain't doing fire. And look, what, what's, what's one of the, the slang words being used right now all over this world? Boy, that's fire. That's fire. What's this? When God's people quit sitting around waiting on somebody else to move, waiting on somebody else to do it, get up and go do it ourselves, then you know what? We can bask in it. We can bask in it. Say, so that fire's hot. Yeah, thank you. I'm talking to myself back and forth. You know what? That fire's hot. Thank you, Gary. Amen. Because you know what? It's up to me. If we're stirred up, the fire's stirred up. Amen. Y'all, when we start our day in prayer, if we start our day in worship, we start our day in study, you're stoking the fire. You're stoking the fire. I shared this a long time ago. God spoke something to me one day, and he said this to me. Because I don't know about y'all, but there was a time in my life, you know, when I first got saved, and I was going forth, and, and I was going, and I, I'd pray at night. And it seemed like all of a sudden, you know what, my days just got stressed out longer and longer and longer. Seemed like it'd be time. And then when I finally get started praying, you know what, it doesn't be late night, and I'd catch myself waking up. And then I apologize, God, I'm sorry. And then one day God spoke this to me. He said, you know what? Gary, I said, what, Lord? How many knows he'll call you by your name if you listen? <laughs> Amen. He said, you know what? He said, it is better, listen to me real close, it is better to awake early in the morning and pray over your day than it is to wait till late at night and pray about your day. Did somebody hear what I said? You see, if I don't pray over my day today, then tonight I'm going to pray about all the stuff I didn't pray about this morning. Amen. I'm going to have to pray about my day. Lord, this happened today, this happened today. But you know what? This morning I got up early and covered that. Amen. He said it's better to wake early and pray over your day. So if we start our day in prayer, we start our day, you know what, with worship. We start our day with, 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 with study. You know what? That's just putting logs on the fire. It said the priest added logs to the fire every morning, not every Sunday. Not just every Wednesday, every day. You know what? I don't want my fire just burning just the days that we all come in here. I want my fire to burn everywhere I go and everything I do. I want it to burn. I want it to, 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 to burn. You know what? That, that, that so, so much so. You know, it's said that, that, that when they put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they turned the fire up so hot that when the people... The guards went close to it. It burnt them up. Well, you know what? There's a lot of folks you may, you're going to meet tomorrow that needs to get, in, get, get some of your fire. Yeah. Amen. They need to get some of your fire. Y'all, we add fresh wood. We stoke that fire inside of us when we stir up the word and when we, we go forth and we talk to God and we pray. 
You know, if we get that fire hot enough, watch this. As I said, hopefully somebody will get next to us and catch fire. Maybe somebody else will catch fire. I want to be a match. Earlier, before they ever did that, I, I put worship on in my, in my office, and there's a song I love called Fresh, Fresh Fire. And I knew that God had titled this message Fresh Fire. I put that song on, and you know what it says in, in one part of it? It says, light a match, let it go, start a blaze, uncontrolled. I want that fire. I want that fire. And he goes on to say, give me a fresh, fresh fire. A fresh fire. Y'all, I want to be a match that will start a forest fire. Do you know that one match can start a whole forest fire? It could burn up millions of acres. We need to be that match. We need to be that match. We need to tell the Lord. Fresh fire is what we desire. A fresh fire is what we desire, Lord. That's what we want. We want a fresh fire. Y'all, there's, there's a move of God taking place. And I'm not saying God's doing anything here. He's not going to do anywhere else. But you know what? I know this. I believe this. I believe there's a willing body of Christ out here saying, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Do what you want done. And I believe that's why we're experiencing that fresh fire. And, 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 and the way that the time failed this past weekend for, for folks to come in here is God is doing what he's doing. You know what? And, and, and they went forth. We can't even imagine what all God did. And y'all, there's not a person here. I've shared it many times. You're not here, those here, those watching, listen. You're not here by chance or coincidence. You think about where your life has been, where your old life was, what happened, how you wound up in all different places. But this is one place you thought you'd never wind up. And look where you're at. And people have bought, brought folks, you know what, into this body of Christ and this, and this church from all over. You know what, from, 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 from over, I mean, other nations. We've got folks here from, from you know what, uh, uh, New Orleans. We've got folks here from, from, from I mean, from everywhere. We've got folks here from all over that, that's, come, that's become a part of our family. You know what, not by chance or coincidence. You didn't just happen up here. Nothing just happens with God. You didn't just happen in here. God brought you in to catch that fire so that you could be a light for him. We did a thing. <coughs> we've done it quite a few times, and we'll probably do it again at some time or another, but well, we gave everybody in the church a candle, cut all the lights out, Lit one in this corner, one in this corner. And as they lit the candle next to them, and that light kept passing down and going till it lit the whole church up without turning the lights back on. You know what? That's what your fire can do. I say it, I'll always say it, and I'll never stop saying it unless God himself personally comes to me and tells me it's not going to happen. I believe that you, I believe that we, God can use this whole body right here to change the whole world and save the whole world. I believe that. I believe that. And I know for a fact the reason he brought you here is first and foremost for you. And I'm talking about everybody here. But to, but to catch that fire so that, you know what, we can be fire in our households and our families. And, and, and you know what, in this county, in this community, in the cities, in the neighborhoods, and, and, and everywhere that, that, that we go, in the stores, into every place that we go, we have, you know what, opportunity. But, but you know what, you can't just warm up to it. You've got to let that all-consuming fire consume everything inside of you. You've got to jump in. And I believe God's speaking to some folks tonight. To saying, you know what, I'm tired of playing church. Guess what, God's tired of his people playing church. He's tired of his people just going in and out. It's time to dive in, amen? Yeah. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, please.
I don't know what's your heart, what's in your heart, what you, where you stand. But you know what? As God's word says, he said, I, I know what you do. He knows everything about everybody here. You can't hide nothing. You can't, you can't fool him. And why, why would you? You know what? First and foremost, what has the world ever done for you besides try to kill, steal, and destroy? And you know what? Sometimes pride won't let us. We say, but I don't know much about that, so, so I can't just go sell out because I got to know because I got to be. God don't want us to be the way. He just wants us to be humble before him. That's the key word in God's word is, is to be humble. He said, if my people, which, which are called by my name, humble herself. Humble ourselves just to be able to come. And, and you know what? What that means is saying, God, I can't live this life without you. I can't have a life without you. I can't make it. And you know what? If you're here, you're watching, listening, and you, you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, and you, you can act, you, can, you know that you can say, you know what? I've tried. I've tried to live this life, but it just keeps getting worse and worse. Or maybe you're here and you, you, you said, you know what? I've called on him before. But, but, but I, I, I tested the waters back in the world, and I, I can't do it. I can't live that life. You know where your heart stands tonight. And so many people try to base what's happening in life by, well, I did this years ago. This is now. We're talking about right now. Where you're at in your life. What, what's going on? You know what, truthfully, are you in a true, 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 sincere personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Not with the church, not with the church body, but with Jesus Christ. If you say tonight, you know what, I, I thought it was, or I think, you know what, don't think, no. If you say tonight, I'm not going to leave this service till I know. And you know what, tonight I'm surrendering my heart and my life. Tonight, you know what, I'm jumping all the way in the fire. I'm, I'm going in, consume anything, take anything out of me. I'm tired of holding on stuff. I'm old. It keeps dragging me back out in the world. It keeps dragging me back in. I'm tired of, of just doing the church thing. I'm tired of just going through the motions. I'm tired. Today, tonight is my night that, you know what, when I leave here, I'm going to know it is well with my soul. If that's you, again, get pride out of the way. Don't wait on somebody else to move. Say, you know what? Today, this is my day. Be a leader, not a follower. Now, Jesus wants to follow him, but you know what? You follow him, but you know what? Be that one that steps out and says, you know what? I'm not worried about what somebody else thinks or says. I'm going. This is my night. Tonight, I'm surrendering my heart and my life. I'm giving my whole heart my whole life. I've, I've been through it before, but I've never really said surrender. And that takes a humbling. That's you. Ask somebody next to you. Say, hey, would you walk with me? Because my legs, my body wants to go, but my legs won't go. They'll walk with you. And all you got to say is, I surrender. I surrender. I got some white flags in there, and I'm going to do a message with, and I'm going to start giving. Everybody that says, I surrender, I'm going to give you a white flag to wave. And say, you know what? I'm waving my white flag. I surrender. I surrender. If that's what you want to take place in your life, pray this prayer with me from your heart. Say, Jesus, I surrender. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I need you, Jesus. I believe that you gave your life and died on that cross for my sin. I believe that on the third day, you arose, <laughs> you're alive and well at God's right hand. Today, I profess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior, for I truly believe that I am forgiven. I believe I'm saved. For I've called upon your name. I thank you for it. And I ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Y'all, we got folks up here. 
no matter what you got going on that want to pray with you. If you want to pray, you come and say, the Bible says any two agreeing on anything you ask. We got folks standing right up here that's ready and, and willing to pray with you if you got something you need prayed for. We're so glad that you joined us in service today, and we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, we want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving an opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. God's Word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his word teaches us that if we believe he is who he says he is and he did what he said he would do, that, that if we believe that he died on the cross for our sins and that God our Father raised him up from the dead and we profess him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, pray. If you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. 1 Kings 8 and 39. You know your heart. God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by chance happening. You're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, the app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us and we promise you we're going to, to, to put it before folks and we're going to put it before God. And if you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. And if you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today and thank you for, for just being with us and know that, that, you know what, God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day and know that, that you know what, this day is the day the Lord's made, so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.